oh shit, I'm upside down. So I've never heard a full Suicide Boys album. I've only ever heard a couple songs off different projects. But a friend of mine told me to check it out. They said it was pretty good, so we're gonna check it out. So we got a 13 track album here with a 35 minute runtime with uh, looks like all of them being produced by Scrim, who goes by an alias uh, Bud Dwyer. I'm not sure where the name came from. Um, I do know that there was a famous politician who offed himself live on camera um, in court called Bud Dwyer. I'm not sure if there's any correlation, but I thought it was an interesting little fun fact for y'all. Starting off with the intro track, we got Lone Wolf Hysteria, which sets the mood right with a like a hard hitting, um, kind of aggressive Suicide Boy song, which uh, sets the mood for the whole album. And then we got Mental Clarity is a Luxury I Can't Afford, which is also another good song. Uh, just kind of keeping the momentum going throughout this whole album. Then we got the Thin Gray Line, which is just like a sinister beat, and the Scream and Ruby the Cherry just both like going in on different melodies and different styles uh, throughout the song. It's one of the most played on Apple Music because it has like the little circle by the name. Following with Thorns, which kind of slows down the tempo a little and is a, like a slightly more melodic song. With Misery and Walking Hour, bringing back some of the aggression. Uh, and bringing the tempo up a little, leading into Burgundy, which is one of the most played on the song as well. It's also one of my favorite off the tracks, which is like a horror style type beat, which has like a la 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 la, like the, throughout the whole song, which is just like Scream Ruby, just also like just going in, uh, which kind of seems to be the theme here, which is just them like having these like really good beats and them just like going in on, uh, on everything burgundy after that we got transgression which kind of slows the mood down a little bit this is one of the songs that actually made me stop and check the lyrics just because this is like uh sounds like a more personal song where they actually talk about like some of the problems that they're going through and some of the things that just bother them in life in general following this we got are you gonna see the rose in the vase or the dust in the table which is a very good song very good uh, melodic beat it's one of the most uh, played off the album, and I can see why. I mean, the song just hits. You should definitely listen to it. If you do listen to one song off the album, I would say it's listen to this one. Um, do you see the rose in the vase or the dust on the table? Very good song. Long title track, but I guess that's just how they do it. All of My Problems Always Involve Me has a nice trumpet style beat, which features a statement from Ruby saying how, in the event of our untimely death, Please do not release any music that was, you know, may, uh, not released before. Don't continue their music career, which is kind of a message I agree with because I feel like once an artist passes away, their like discography and the music that they put out is like theirs. Like I don't think labels should be able to control like what an artist can release and what they can't. Um, fuck you, Grade A. Um, besides that, very good song. The Light at the End of the Tunnel for $5.99 a month is the next song. It's also a personal favorite of mine. It has Lil Wayne on the intro. It also has Karma Swing Pool. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But they provide like a soft melodic voice throughout the uh, instrumental, kind of in the background as the, the instruments are going off, which add to the song a lot and make it a really good listen. Then kicking up the tempo a little, we got Drag Them to the River, which is a total totalitarian remix. Um, I'm not sure if that's an artist or who remixed it, but it's a good song. It uh, remixes a song, I think it's also called Drag Up to the River. Um, but this is one of my personal favorite, probably my favorite off the album personally. is one that I always go back to a lot. Us vs. Them is another solid track, really uh, continuing the pace that this whole album is going, right? Not really slowing down, not really losing any... Uh, charm or like any production and the last song we got the outro off yourself V I think this is a good outro and it finishes the album off with the same momentum that they had had held throughout the whole album So to me, this is a really good album with no skips and a lot of replayability, right? It sounds like suicide boys aren't trying to be like commercial or like more trendy right appeal to like the general like TikTok kind of audience It sounds like they're just kind of staying in their own lane Right, which is something that they've been doing for a while and they're very good at and I feel like they're just kind of working on their own music right they're honing their own special craft and uh, it's something that you got to respect a lot from them I mean they know what they do and they do it well and overall very good album right if I had to give it a number 
I give it probably like a 7.5 out of 10, right? Uh, I listened to this album entirely for probably like three or four days now, um, multiple listens every day. And I still have no skips, right? I still listen to the album entirely. Sometimes I listen to it in order, sometimes I shuffle it. Either way, it's a good experience. Definitely check it out if you need a Suicide Boys album to listen to and you haven't um, listened to their music. Those have been my thoughts. I hope y'all enjoyed them, right? If anything, listen to the album, listen to one song. If you did, let me know what you think. Thanks for listening to my thoughts. Catch y'all later.